I was told that nahi sir is going to be there to record you and you are doing a Tamil song. I walked into the studio and to my surprise Mani sir Mani Ratnam sir was also present inside the studio. Singing a song is not about getting the notes right. It's about being able to emote in a way that you know you're able to hit the right chords of the listener's heart. Tracking milestones of an incredible journey spanning 30 years. Rahman Music Sheets. PS1. Directed by Mani Rattam, promoted as an AR Rahman musical and released in Tamil, Hindi, Telugu, Malayalam and Kannada. Along with veterans, a new girl makes her debut with Rahman. She had actually sung the scratch version of the song. Scratch versions are used only as a sample for shooting for actors to match their lip movements. They are finally recorded by established singers. But in this case, Destiny played its role and the scratch version got finalized for PS1. Presenting the singer Antara Nandi. The song was recorded two, two and a half years back, just before lockdown. Uh, I was in Chennai for about 10-15 days. And during that time, I was making fre frequent trips to Chennai because you know, I'd go there and stay for like 10 days or so and we'd record as many scratches as possible and then I'd fly back here, home. So it was one of those times. I was in Chennai and um, that particular day, I remember very clearly, I it was a very busy day. Like I had been dubbing scratches from the morning uh, and I think I was done dubbing three to four scratches and I was ready to take the night off. I was ready to leave the studio and go to the hotel and chill for the night. And that's when I was told, no, 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 Nantra, go finish your dinner and come back. Uh, there's another special song waiting for you. And I'm like, oh my gosh, but I think I was super scared because I thought I, I had been singing the entire day. I'll end up sounding tired on the mic. And then I was told that, nahi, sir is going to be there to record you and you're doing a Tamil song. That's when I completely freaked out because like <laughs> I, I had been singing, um, cover, like I had been covering Tamil songs before, but singing an original song in Tamil, you know, in the presence of Sir, it was a whole different level of uh, panic <laughs> for me. Anyway, I finished my dinner and I rushed back to the studio and um, I walked into the studio and to my surprise, Mani Sir, Mani Ratnam Sir was also present inside the studio. So like I said, I was already super tensed and seeing Mani Sir and that was by the way my first time seeing Mani Sir, you know, in front of me. I had only ever seen him on screen. So, and you know, apart from all that, the fact that I had to sing a Tamil song, that was already eating me up. Like, I didn't know how I was going to do it because see, the languages I speak, I'm not a native Tamil speaker. Languages I speak are, you know, Bengali, Assamese, Hindi, English. Tamil has a lot of pronunciations that are a lot different from the languages that I speak. And singing a song, uh, Sir always says this that singing a song is not about getting the notes right it's about being able to emote in a way that you know you're able to hit the right chords of the listener's heart and you can only do that when you understand the song well because you have to emote according to the lyrics and being a and not being a native tamil speaker i was very scared about not being able to do that any which ways i thought chalo it's a scratch we'll somehow manage something so I went behind the microphone, I stood there and as it is, I was panic stricken and I took on more load on myself by telling sir, sir, when I sing this song, I, I know this is a scratch version. This will probably not be there in the movie, but uh, still, whenever, whoever listens to this song after I'm done dubbing, I don't want them to listen to the song and think, oh, it's cool, a North Indian girl tried singing in Tamil. I don't want anybody to say that. Um, I want to sound like a na native Tamil girl singing a Tamil song. Sir didn't say much. He just smiled. He said, okay, we'll see. <laughs> so, sir sort of played me the melody and we had the lyrics written in front of me. So, we had to, I had to place the words on the melody and deliver it. 
and I was freaking out. And the things, like I was saying, the thoughts that were running in my head was, uh, I have to emote well, I have to hit the right notes, uh, the main part of a song is the dynamics, I have to get the dynamics right, and I can't mess up the pronunciations and all these things. And then I have Sir sitting right in front of me, so I was also thinking that uh, Sir is a busy person, I don't want to take up a lot of his time. Uh, so I have to, you know, be able to wrap up this song in as less takes as possible. And Money Sir was also sitting, so I was like, I, I should be able to cast a certain impression. He shouldn't feel like, oh my gosh, this girl takes a lot of time. Oh my gosh, she's not getting what I'm trying to explain. Oh my, all these things, and I was so damn nervous. Anyway, so we, I started singing. And, you know, I think I recorded the first two lines. And then Sir explained me the meaning, and then he said... I, I clearly remember this one line he said to me. If you've watched PS1, you'd see the song is picturized on a boat woman, Pungarelli. I was told that beforehand that, you know, she's a very strong character. She's rowing a boat and she's mid-ocean. So when you sing the song, make sure you, you bring out emotions of love and strength. And, you know, she's singing this for a prince who she's in love with, but she also knows that she can't be with the prince. So I was like, huh, all that I understand. But how am I supposed to bring these emotions out when I don't, you know, all these emotions and these are mostly emotions that I've not <laughs> experienced myself. So I was like, how is that going to happen? Any which way. So like I was saying, I sang the first two lines and um, that's when Sir stopped me and he said, listen, so there's a boat and it's, an, it's on an ocean and how do the waves go? They go like this, right? And that's how I want your song to go. It it needs to hit its highs and then it needs to come down again. You, when you sing it, your notes need to sound like you're riding the waves of the ocean. That was his brief to me. And I was like, okay, so that's how we're going to do this. And the rest of the session, I didn't realize how soon we were done because Remansa literally walked me through the entire session, line by line, word by word. He made sure I got all the pronunciations right. He made sure I got all the dynamics right uh, and Mani sir was there. I remember throughout the session, Mani sir did not sit down. He was just standing there throughout the session. He was more tense than I was, I think. But after we finished the song, see, usually when we are doing an original song, roughly it takes about two, two and a half hours to wrap up a song. But oddly, Alai Kadal took me roughly an hour or so, like should be 45 minutes to an hour to finish. And in a language that I don't speak. So I I was shocked to have finished the song that soon. And I think that happened because Rehman sir exactly knows what he wants and how to get the best out of a singer. So since I had he, he had recorded me a lot of times before, I sort of feel like he exactly knew how to get the best out of me. And he just knew what, you know, the right things to say to me to make sure that I'm able to deliver the way that Mani sir and he have in mind you know so that's what happened we finished the song i came out of the recording cubicle and i came uh, and stood beside sir and mani sir and mani sir was like you did well i said oh thank god so then we listened to the whole song and then mani sir uh, had a couple of more changes in mind so we did th those changes and that's it the song was done in an hour like i said um, I walked out of the studio and one of the engineers, he was sitting outside and he's like, done? I said, yeah. He said, didn't you have to sing in Tamil? I said, yeah. So then like, uh, the, he was speaking to me in Hindi. So he said, Tamil mein tune itte jaldi kaise gaadi tujhe to Tamil bolna bhi nahi aata. I'm like, I have no clue. I think this is just all Rahman. So like, he literally guided me through the entire song line by line. And, you know, we wrapped up the song. I was back in Pune, done and dusted. It took years of learning, hard work, sacrifices for Antara to be able to sing scratches for Rahman. She started learning at the age of four. When she was nine, she participated in the reality show Sare Gama Pa Little Champs. When I was on that show, I learned how to hold the microphone. You know, little things like when you hit high notes or when you're projecting a lot, you're supposed to take the microphone away. These are things I didn't know. I didn't know how to face the audience. 
I had massive stage fright. A song needs a certain sort of projection. There are some songs that need to sound sweet. Some need a different sort of projection. These are things I didn't know. I didn't know what projection meant. And apart from all that, apart from uh, being groomed musically, it it's a holistic grooming. You learn how to stand on stage, how to be confident, how to handle people. Uh, when you're performing in live shows, because during the show, they also take you for live events. So when you're performing for a live crowd, understanding what they expect of you, being able to deliver according to that, making sure that you have the audience in your grip till the end of the show. So, a, you know, a huge grooming process happened. I got a lot more confident and I started considering taking up music professionally. Antara continued to learn music. Besides exploring various genres and their nuances, she recorded many cover versions. We could have fought it all, in the deep. Even while doing covers, Antara kept opting for compositions by Rahman. Antara, cover versions are supposed to be an interpretation by the cover artist. Sir. But do you think that a cover artist too has a responsibility while touching somebody else's original work? See, uh, um, I don't know what to say about this. I mean, of course, uh, like you said, a cover is supposed to be your own interpretation of a song. But having said that, like the fact that you're covering a song, it sort of means that you are redoing a song that already exists and when you're doing that I think it's the responsibility of the singer to make sure you you still respect the original composition you can't deviate from the composition so much that you know it sort of kills the original essence of the song I have learned that the hard way as a child as a teenager I would add n number of variations to songs that I would cover you know it took me a while to understand that not all songs need to uh, need all these variations some songs you just need to if, if a song has been delivered a certain way that's because that's how it's meant to be delivered it's not about showing how tayar you are all the time or showing you know how much you're capable of so you need to keep the originality alive and usko rakhte hue how much can you do like without distorting the song basically but it took me a while to understand that. <laughs> We've arrived. <laughs> 2018 arrived. India's first YouTube original. Many roads, many folks, one destination. This is YouTube Originals Arrived. This music reality show focused only on music. Antara Nandi was one of the participants. Very How was Arrived different from other reality shows that we watch on TV? Oh, it was hell and heaven, honestly. <laughs> so, um, Arrived was a very different reality show altogether. As a show, Arrived was very real, uh, very free of drama, <laughs> if I may say so. And it was purely music. It was just preparing your songs, getting the arrangements right. The arrangements were done brilliantly. Uh, getting the arrangements right, uh, it was a fantastic band. Um, performing the song in front of your um, judges, getting the comments, the next episode, that's it, that was it. There was no in between, no drama, no backstory, nothing. It was just purely music, get your judgment, got your judgment, now sit back, think how to improve, do your next performance. That was the show. And that's what was the best part. So after arrived, I actually took a lot from the show like I learned a lot out of the show um, and uh, the best thing that happened was I got noticed by sir which I didn't quite expect uh, to happen right before the finale I, I, I flew back to Pune I remember I had a exam that day I flew back to Pune to be able to appear for that exam actually the show was still on and uh, I remember that particular morning, I was rushing to make it in time. I had my water bottle in one hand, pencil box in another. I was a mess. I was just trying to rush and get to the exam hall. 
that's when my phone started ringing i'm like oh my god who is it now i picked up the call and it was kartik anna from the studio and he said antra you have to come to chennai it's a 2 pm flight um and uh, i said what, what what studio where he said what studio can i be talking about you have to come to chennai rehman sir studio and sir wants to do a song with you my mind stopped working i was like what after all these years it's happening like sir wants to work with me me and that moment i was like oh my gosh do i rush to the exam hall or do i catch the flight because if i had to catch the flight i had one hour to go i called my mom and i told her mama see this is the scenario what do i do for the first time my parents see they've uh, they've always been like academics first we need the scores we need your degree you know uh and for the first time when i told them mama i have i'm right outside the exam hall and i have this call what do i do my, both my parents you know it, in unison they just said that's not even a question exams will come and go this this won't just go catch the flight and i caught that flight and i don't think <laughs> any of us we regret that decision and that was my first time working with sir prem ki barakh mein bhige bhige tan man dharti pe dekhenge pani ka dar Antra, who had been covering Rahman's songs, finally sang a scratch for Rahman, and then she sang the Mission Pani anthem for Rahman. So, जो तो क्यों है आज सहम सहम पानी ये चुप चाप पानी and finally a song for ps1 to share the saga of this fascinating journey antra nandi will continue with us in the next episode stay with us subscribe to our youtube channel press the bell icon and stay entertained